Welcome everyone to Mayo Clinic q and I'm Dr. Helena Gazelka. In the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic, the disease was recognized as a respiratory virus. We now know that the virus affects many parts of the body and some of the most severe damage can be to the heart muscle. COVID-related myocarditis or inflammation of the heart muscle is a condition that can cause heart damage and even sudden cardiac death if it's left untreated. Here with us today uh, to discuss this is Dr. Leslie Cooper, the chair of the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine at the Mayo Clinic in Florida. Thanks for being with us today, Dr. Cooper. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, this is a topic that's really interesting and I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit about it. We knew when COVID began that it was affecting the lung, but really didn't know much about how it affected the heart at that time. Could you share a little bit about what we've learned uh, since then? There are two groups of people who get COVID infection who have some meaningful amount of heart involvement. The first is those people who are in the hospital, those people who are sick and, and sometimes need respiratory support. They can get heart involvement for a number of reasons, heart damage, both from myocarditis, but even more from the low oxygen that happens with lung infection or from the inflammation that affects the whole body called a cytokine storm. Those are, are terribly important in the hospital patients. The second group are young people, such as athletes, who would be participating in sport. If they get infected, there's a very low risk of heart involvement, but if it does happen, I think it's more likely to be myocarditis rather than those other mechanisms in the older hospitalized patients. So Dr. Cooper, could you just explain a little bit for us, is COVID actually attacking the heart muscle itself or is there sort of a downstream effect on the heart? Both are true. COVID can affect the heart both by damaging heart muscle cells as well as by the inflammatory cells that circulate in your blood that can go into the heart trying to attack uh, or um, repair damage from infection. So yes, COVID-19 does cause direct damage in the heart. In the older patients, it, can, it, is an, it is mostly downstream. So what actually happens to the, to the heart muscle itself? You mentioned inflammation, so uh, like inflammation in another part of the body, but do the cells die or are they still viable? What happens to them? Mm -hmm. So certainly some cells die. Cardiac myocytes die, but even before they die, they become dysfunctional. And when they don't work well, then they can cause arrhythmias. And those arrhythmias can present as symptoms of palpitations or sometimes even loss of consciousness. What kind of tests do you do to try to figure out if someone's heart is being affected by COVID? The first is a blood test. We do a blood test called a troponin, which can reveal a damage to heart muscle cells. The second is an electrocardiogram, a simple EKG, which can show uh, involvement of the conduction system, the heart, or, or damage of the heart muscle. Finally, in those people who have symptoms from heart involvement and some abnormal blood test or EKG, we can go on to an echo or more advanced imaging. Almost everyone is having to face some kind of decision making now during COVID-19, whether the kids should go back to school, whether we can send kids to daycare, whether we should be working in what settings. Athletes are having the same kind of um, discussions going on and some of them have decided to sit out and not play um, uh, this season. Is that because they're worried about catching COVID-19 itself or because of concern about cardiac um, incidents? That's a really good question. Um, there are national uh, consensus recommendations for sports participation in people who are infected. They are uh, currently for the high school athletes, 14 days of quarantine uh, without uh, full sports participation if you have no symptoms and are just um, asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic COVID. But if you have symptoms of heart involvement like chest pain or trouble breathing, then we do recommend more extensive evaluation up front and a longer time away from sports participation if there is cardiac involvement. And that would be true, of course, of professionals and, um, you know, like you said, of school children playing sports and things like that too. Correct. The recommendations would be for, for all professional as well as uh, amateur athletes. Do you anticipate that we will be seeing more evidence of myocarditis or incidents of it in the upcoming years as a result of um, COVID? Can it be delayed, in other words? Yes, I, I would answer your question by saying not just 
myocarditis, which is a really specific thing, but cardiac injury, which is broader, may be delayed. And there, can't, there have been several reports where uh, people uh, are clinically better, but there's still imaging evidence uh, of some cardiac injury. And we do not know yet the clinical significance, meaning the risk of arrhythmias or future heart failure from these imaging findings. That is an area of intense research. That is one thing that I have been absolutely uh, fascinated by and impressed by in this time of COVID-19, the amount of medical literature that has been published just in the last um, you know, several months about this entity and how much we have learned about it seems just, it's, it's amazing. What kind of research do you think is important to be doing in terms of cardiac research and what's uh, going on at Mayo? I think there are several areas of great opportunity. The first is in those young athletes you mentioned. We do need to follow these people prospectively at this point to determine what the actual risk is. This is a new virus. We've never had to uh, study it before. It's different than other viruses that cause myocarditis. And we don't know for this specific virus what the actual risks are. So we, the first opportunity is following people prospectively to determine uh, if there is a meaningfully uh, high risk of arrhythmias or sudden death or heart failure. The second is treatment trials. And at Mayo Clinic, we have led the national effort for convalescent plasma, which is now showing positive results in people who are sicker in the hospital, as well as we are part of significant studies uh, that block the immune system, studies uh, aimed at specific molecules like interleukin-6 which are mediators of inflammation, as well as the antiviral trials. And finally, of course, we all want to know what will happen with the vaccine trials a uh, few more months before those results are available. We've talked a little bit about how people can have very acute um, symptoms or issues with uh, their heart from COVID-19, but that there could be um, ramifications that we aren't aware of yet. For our lay public, what should they be looking for if they themselves have COVID-19 or have a, a family member who does? Are there certain symptoms that should cause them concern and to uh, seek uh, medical care regarding their heart? If anyone, uh, not just those people who have COVID-19, develops new chest pain, new chest pain, particularly if it's with exertion or different positions, or new trouble breathing, shortness of breath at rest or with activities, those are reasons you should go and see your doctor. Uh, and get an evaluation that could include cardiac studies. Most worrisome would be episodes of passing out or losing consciousness. If you find that you're feeling like you're about to pass out or have rapid and irregular heartbeats, those are reasons to go more urgently to see your doctor or even the emergency room. Very interesting. Thanks for all the great information today. Our thanks to Dr. Leslie Cooper, the Chair of Cardiovascular Medicine at the Mayo Clinic in Florida for being with us today. And thanks to all of you, too, for listening in today. We wish you a wonderful day. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts. To see a list of all Mayo Clinic podcasts, visit newsnetwork.mayoclinic.org. Then click on podcasts. Thanks for listening and be well. We hope you'll offer a review of this and other episodes when the option is available. Comments and questions can also be sent to Mayo Clinic News Network at mayo.edu.